What's going on, guys? It's your girl, Mikhail Rose, and welcome to Iconics Radio. I'm so excited. Y'all decided to stop by and see what's going on. Today, we have an amazing guest. Mr. Kenny is in the building. How you feeling? I'm feeling great. Y'all calm me. down on today. Please, please. All his fans is in here. Magchop.com. Squad up. Squad up. Squad up. Let's go. Um, I know earlier we talked about you getting a barbecue in Texas for the first time. And then I heard to the great fine Juan did it. Oh, yeah. So, you know, I'm sorry. Uh, Papa Do's, any other barbecue places out there, I'm sorry. This is not your... One did it, okay? Homemade, homemade deliciousness. Fresh off the pit. Yes. Ooh, it's always good like that, I'm telling you. Um, it's such a pleasure to have you. Thank you for coming to Texas. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, man. Um, we, we've been uh, communicating for a lot, and we finally got you here. Um, and it's about to be good because we're about to learn a lot about you and what you're bringing, what you've brought to the industry um, on many levels. Um, entrepreneur. Artist, fashion designer, actor, like the list goes on and on with you. I'm like, what doesn't this guy do? Okay. But um, let's start off with, um, how are you feeling today? I'm feeling great. I'm feeling nice and relaxed. Yes. I was in the pool today. You look like it. Yeah, I, I, I had a great day. So oh, I'm man. Re- I'm feeling good. Texas been <laughs> been been treating you right? You know what? Every time I've come to Texas, yeah. and I've been to different parts of Texas, yeah. and I've never had a bad time. Awesome. Everybody's nice. The food is great. The people awesome. are great. I love this place. Oh, man. I kid you not. Um, when I used to, when, when me and my husband would go back home, uh, he's from Detroit, and um, we would, you know, just go random places with the fam. And I'd be like, hey, y'all. Hey, y'all. How y'all doing? And I'd be like, why are you speaking? Speaking to everybody. I'm like, I'm from Texas. This is what we do. You don't know her? It's like, even if you don't know him, say hi. Okay. <laughs> so um, I'm so glad that um, that you're here, though, because Iconics Radio, we've been waiting for you, honey. Yes. Squad up now. Squad Mr. Up. One C, he brought the heat. Um, it's been such a pleasure to hear about you because he mentioned you in his interview. Yes, I watched it. And and I we were just watch. like, yo, we got to get him. And he was like, okay, done. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> and it says a lot about um, you all's camaraderie. Yeah. Um, what you have is like a brotherhood. Yes. Uh, it's family. I mean, you work together, obviously. Yeah. But when somebody call you up, it's like, hey, I need you. And you're like, okay, book and flight down. <laughs> yeah. You get fresh barbecue off the pit. That's like, that's family. That's family. Wow. Squad up. The squad. squad. Um, Let's talk about it. All right. So it's, uh, I get to co-star with Juan. Yes. In the movie. He Uh wrote it, directed it. Yeah. And I got a really cool part in it. And it was, it was wild how he brought it to me. How, you know, how we talked about it. So Juan and I, we actually became friends. We, he was in Florida doing a promotion for, he had just won um, for Trap Plane. New York Film Festival, he won the best best series. Wow! And so there was a there was a film that was being made in South Florida, and they they invited him down there to kind of cross promote. <clears throat> and um, what ended up happening was I went to the event, and I met him there, and I also met the lady that was doing the promotion for it all. Yeah. So he was coming back to Florida for for another I think it was like I think it was like the second episode or something like that. Okay. And they were gonna you know because they were doing a series, mm-hmm. and. They, the lady called me and she said, hey, you know, I got this the director that you met. He's coming back. You know, I want to do something with him over the weekend. You know, have something fun for him to do. And I had my first fashion show was that weekend for Palm Beach wow. Zoom So I was like, you know what? I'll tell you what. I'll give you first place. I mean, uh, f- first row yeah. at my fashion show. And then at the after party, come to the after party and hang out with, you know, because all the models come to my fa- after party. So. <laughs> One say is, I mean, uh, Kenny say it's lit. One say it's, it's lit, lit too. Look, it's lit. Yeah. <laughs> it's lit. <laughs> My after parties are no joke. Don't miss that. Okay, <laughs> oh, okay. We we coming next time now. Oh, yeah. Just look, put us on the list. Okay. <laughs> wow. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, and then, so so you guys you guys get together. So we developed a friendship. It was wild because we, we hung out. Everybody's hanging out, but we became really good friends. And was like, we just kept in touch. I would tell him about the different shows that I was doing. He was telling me about projects that he was, yeah. you know, his plans and everything like that. Well, I ended up being asked to be in a movie. So I the movie that I did ended up on Amazon Prime. And it was crazy because I'm on the box and everything. I called one. I was like, dude, you're not going to believe this. I shot this film. 
And it's wow. on Amazon Prime. And he's like, wait a minute. You know, all the time we talked, you never really talk, talk about being an actor. I go, well, I'm, I'm really not. I just, you know, <laughs> I got asked to do the movie and I did it, you know. Wow. And he's like, man, I've had a role for you. Have a look that I want. I have a role for you. And that's how he, I, he flew me in for the squad. <laughs> So what was the the other film that you you were you were uh, featuring in? So I was in a movie called Crossing the Line. Crossing the Line, yeah. okay. So I starred in that one. Yeah. And then I'm also my artwork and is in a movie called uh, Marriage Killer. I'm in it with my artwork and Dream Killer. So I you know there's quite a few of them. Um, Loyalty or Betrayal. So I started doing all these films. The thing was is I was going to these directors and production companies because I wanted to take my products and make them memorabilia. Because I found that there's a there's a big market for people who like to own something they saw in a movie or a music video. Okay. And I was like, man, if I can create that with my products, oh, <clears throat> where I can create a demand where people yeah. say, man, I got that, and and because it's a conversational piece, you're sitting there with a really cool looking mug and say, yeah, not only is your mug cool, it was in this movie, and so that's what I wanted to do. But every time my products wow. or my artwork were on set. The di directors or the producers would be like, hey, listen, we got a look that we kind of like. And you want to be in the movie? And I was like, yeah, sure. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> Wait. So, <laughs> so ain't no agents booking him. I, I want y'all to follow this. <laughs> no. <laughs> ain't nobody just like, like you know, we, we think, no. His, your art, yes. your creativity yes. is being presented by you. And they take your art and then they want you to. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so that's what you call product placement yeah. <laughs> <laughs> serious whoa <clears throat> that's how it all started it and it was it just been it, the roles were getting more and more because someone would see it and be like man you know i saw you in this and you did really good so i didn't know you can act I'm like, all right well let's do it like what? i got a role for you you know you know what's so interesting um it's kind of not exactly the same but it also it puts me in the mindset of sylvester stallone mm. and the movie rocky oh wow you know yeah. Honestly, it's like I just got chills. Oh my god! Wow. <laughs> so as long as you don't, like you don't have a dog, you're not trying to be, get no, in the movie. Okay, no, <laughs> okay, I'm just no. saying. But it's so interesting because you just never know how your creativity can yeah. open up other doors for oh, yeah. you. Now, not only have you been in one film, you've been in over six, about six of them, about six films. Yes, and your art and your Mugs, my, my, our, and my products always follow me into the films. Wow. Okay. And they were actually there first. It was, I, I follow them. Into yeah. the films. <laughs> it's like, I got this, but look, right here, me. <laughs> awesome. Um, let's talk about um, who is Mag Chop? Not Mad. <laughs> not not M-A-D. Okay. Mag Chop. Who is Mag Chop, Kenny? So what Mag Chop is, is my art company. So I, I, used, to, I used to do graffiti growing up in Chicago. Okay. Um, and my art always it just progressed. I was able to draw people. I could sit there and look at something and draw it. But something strange happened when my mother passed away. Okay. I lost that ability. It was like gone. So I used to look at something. I would look at an empty canvas, and I would see the image there. So I was basically tracing what my mind was already showing me there. Wow. That went away. Okay. Yet the crazy images stayed in my mind. I just can't place them anymore. So what I started doing was making collages to try and maybe like spark that. Okay. And so I would make these collages and they would take months to put together. And so, you know, if my family liked them, I would frame it and hang it up. And so um, my wife's friend ended up getting engaged to the guy who was actually the founder of Guy Harvey, uh, the, the, the fishing brand. Mm -hmm. and so Guy Harvey is like the world's most renowned nautical artist. And here's the founder of him. The guy who found him is in my house. But I don't know this. I don't know what the guy does for a living. But we're sitting there, we're talking, we're having dinner, you know. And, you know, if someone's looking at you and they're talking to you, they're looking at you. Yeah. So I'm talking to him and I keep seeing him look over to the side of me. Now, I live in Florida now, right? So right. there's a lot of weird things in Florida. Right. It's not common things. I don't have, like, regular, like, little roaches or ants. I don't have that. No. No. Uh-uh. If there's something in my house, it's a spider. It's huge. It's yeah. some weird animal. You know what I mean? Yeah. That happens. Nothing that's average size. Right. <laughs> so I'm, yeah, yeah. So I'm thinking to myself as I'm talking to him, Please tell me there's not a spider or something walking around. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. So I kind of like look back, like like I need to let him know I see you're looking beyond me. Right. I look back, I look at my art, and I just kind of look at him like, what are you looking at? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And he goes, I I'm, I'm paying attention to you, but where did you get that? And I was like, what? And I was like, I made that. Sh you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I totally blew it off. And he's like, 
Well, I want to see the other ones. I, I know there's got to be more. Now, at that time, I had only made six. And so I was kind of taken back, and I was like, you know, well, what makes you think there's more? Because I was just kind of like, what, what, what's giving me the idea that I've made more of them? You right, know? right. And he says, because nobody makes that once. Oh. And so I said, yes. Yeah. So I gave him a little tour, and I showed him the, you know, the, the pieces. I had a couple of them on the wall. The other ones were in my art room. And uh, he's looking at him, and, and he's, he's a really tall guy. Yeah. He kind of looks over at me, and he says, do you know who I am? Which was such a strange question. And me being from Chicago, someone says that to me. Right. You know. So I was like, do you know who I am? Huh. <laughs> <laughs> was like, uh, you know. Yes. <laughs> you know? And he started laughing. He's like, no, like, do you know what I do? And I was like, no, I, I think you, I heard you work for Guy Harvey or something like that. And he goes, ha, ah, I don't work for Guy Harvey. He works for me. Oh. And I was like, oh. And so he's like, what do you know about him? I say, he's the world's most renowned nautical artist. That's what I know about him. And he says, yeah. He says, I went around the world. And I'm to, to give him that title, I had to earn that title. I went around the world to showing his artwork. And he goes, and one thing that I had learned while traveling around the world was how popular collage art is around the world. Oh. But in the United States, it's the least popular medium. Hmm. The hardest to sell. Strange, right? Yeah. So I was like, wow. And he's telling me about this college that's in Europe that's dedicated to collage art. And he's like, I'm telling you, I've been around the world and I've seen collage art. I've never seen it done this way. I think you have something special here. And that was the beginning of, of my, of like, okay, now I was thinking, okay. But I actually told him, he says, he says to me, he says, listen, if you ever decide to go into the art business, let me know and I'll give you some connections to try and get you started. And I had just taken a position for a company that I was really excited about. It was a lot of money and I was thinking to myself, no way I'm going to be a starving artist. Right, <laughs> right, 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 right. I know the brutalness of the art I world. I got this job. I got this <laughs> job, you know. And um, a, a crazy thing is that, like a years, a couple years before, I was arrested on a mistaken identity, and it was really bad. Like I was oh. beaten up, taken to jail, wow. and then charged and facing thirty two years in prison. Whoa! So it was like, whoa! I'm so glad you're sitting here. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Spoiler alert: I won. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Period. <laughs> Let's go. But I mean, we went through it. I went through the trial. Yeah. Wow. And it was it was a wild time. Yeah. So here, and I have an impressive resume. So you know, I've got I got this job. I've gone to the two different meetings. Now I'm going for the onboarding. But I get called into the human resources, and they says, "I'm sorry, you know, you're not hiring me." Uh, and I'm like, well, "What's going on here?" Yeah. You know? And I said, "What happened from last week to this week?" And yeah. she says, "Well, um, I looked over your history, yeah. and I you, I assessed that you're a liability, and we can't hire you. You, know, you had some really <sighs> steep charges against you." Yeah. So my response, confidently, was. If you have done your job properly, you would see that I was found not guilty right. by a jury of anything but my peers. Right. This lady took my resume. She put it down. She went, so was OJ. <laughs> Child, <laughs> listen. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. I was so humiliated. I was not in the room that day. Okay. Because <laughs> he would not have gotten the job for sure. Uh, oh, my yeah. gosh. Was, no. Yes. I was humiliated. Talk about a stake in your heart. Yes. And I'm I had so just sorry. gotten this brand new Cadillac STSV. Like Not the STS. Yes. So, you know, and I turned it in. I was like, you know what? All right. You want to okay. knock me down like that? I'm going to show you how, how I can build myself back up. Let's go, Kenny. I, I turned it in. Let's go. And I bought myself an old 2002 Honda minivan. Cash. Yes. Come on now. <laughs> okay, I'm so sorry, y'all. I got excited. I'm telling you. Cash. Because I know what that's like. Yeah. To to downgrade, you know. to I built yeah. up my career to have it crushed by this situation. Yeah. Where, I come out of and then have it hit again. That's when Mag situation. Chop came. came. Let's go. So I called him and I said, hey, I'm going to start that business that you talked about. <laughs> Wait a minute. Okay, so did I just hit it on the head? That's when Mag yes. Chop happened? That's when it started. Listen, y'all. Yep. I'm telling so you. Sometimes the most traumatic things you're going through in your life are really pushing you towards something great that, you that you're supposed to <sighs> be doing. And that's where it started. My goodness. You know, I, I want to say congratulations. Because you made it through that. Some people would have just given up. Oh, yeah. Like, you got the job, and then all of a sudden, it's gone. It's gone. Yeah. Like, what do you have to fall back on? <laughs> yeah. yeah. The bug like, on the wall. I'm just kidding. <laughs> the, <laughs> the, the bug, bug on the wall. The possible spider on the wall. Listen. It was wild. Wow. Yeah. So, you give him the call, and what's his response? What are you going to name your company? And I'm like... I don't know. Okay. So I was like, what do I, th what do I do? So I was thinking about how I do my artwork. I was sitting there one day and I was like, all right, I'm going to go in the art room and chop up some magazines. 
And Come on now. And I was like, that's the that's it. Mag Chop. Chop up magazines. Mag Chop. And that's how the name came to be. <laughs> Boom. Bing. <laughs> History is made. Yep. And it was it was wild because you know, I was still in this, this good. weird, this like, is good. <laughs> it this was is wild. Good. I was still in this, this kind of like insecure stage about my artwork. Yes. And I was like, well, you know, I, I you know, I'd heard that it's already and already know that I'm going in with the hardest art to sell in America. How yes. do you promote the hardest art to sell in America? So I went down to Miami to Wynwood. It's like they have like um, Art Basel is like the Super Bowl of freaking art art shows. Hmm. And so I went down there and. It's so you remember Bugle Boy Jeans? I do. Okay. I do. So they had the commercial. It had like a cartoon. Yes. Well, a friend of mine's cousin is the guy that drew the cartoon. Uh -huh. And so I wanted to show him my artwork. I wanted to sit there, meet with him, kind of get his ideas, maybe get some ideas of how to get into a gallery and everything. Okay. So I go down there. I'm walking through Art Basel. I got my art in my hand. I got my business cards, and you know, I'm giving them out. Yeah. Well, I'm giving out the, the last card I got. And as I'm handing it out, a woman reaches in and grabs the card from the guy. Uh -huh. She looks at it. She goes, let me see your artwork. I show her the art. She looks at it. She's like, I'll see you again. She walks away. Think nothing of it. Okay. Like, cool, you know, cool experience. You know? <laughs> Awkward. And she was a really good looking lady. So yeah. I was like, hey, you know. <laughs> I'll see you again, <laughs> I'll too. I'll see you again. <laughs> you <know? laughs> and um, I did the show and everything like that. Now, at the time, I was working with an attorney who was taking care of all my LLC stuff, getting me the rights to all my images and everything like that. To yes. Get, um, so everything was legal. There was an event that she was going to. And she's like, hey, I got this networking event. Nobody wants to go with me. Do you want to go? I was like, yeah, heck yeah, I'll go. Because, listen, if you're starting a business, networking is where it's at. You've that's got right. to network. That's wow. like that's like your lifeline. Wow. You know, you build more relationships that way than anything else. That's right. Wow. And so I went to this event. I'm meeting people, and I see this one guy is kind of like lingering by himself. And I'm like, I'm going to find out what, what's up with this guy. He's uh -huh. got to be somebody good. Uh -huh. So I walk up to him and say, hey, how you doing? He's like, hey, you know, I'm here with my wife. She's networking, whatever. I said, oh, okay, well, here's my card in case you want some artwork. As I'm handing it to him, guess what? It gets taken out of my hand. It's her. No. Yes, it is. It's Celia Evans, the owner of Planet Fashion TV. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> this is wild. She takes your card again. Yes. And she goes, I knew I'd see you again. And she says, I have a rooftop event going on. I would love if you have enough in your collection to have your art featured as my, on my rooftop um, gala in Miami Beach. And so it was like my first time showing my art, and it's on TV. It was unbelievable. What it was on the rooftop? Yes, and she and I became really good friends. Her and her it was her husband. Like they were there. That so was her cool. husband. Yeah, it was her husband. <laughs> no way. Yes, and so we we ended up becoming good friends and everything. And I would stay in touch with her and everything. Yeah, but I still wasn't in the fashion industry yet. I was still just pushing the art, promoting the artwork. Okay. <laughs> Okay. So, and I mean, I was going everywhere. I was introducing my art everywhere you can go. I was there. Yes. And so I ended up um, going to this one weird networking event. And it was like, it was like, the, we all sat at this big table. There was like political people there. And I was just like, where did I end up? I don't right. Even, I don't even remember how I got invited <laughs> there. I was like, and I'm like, what the heck's going on here? So I go in there, I'm talking, this lady walks in and um, I mean, she's red dress, you know, she was the owner of Palm Beach Swim Week. So she's, I end up seeing sitting next to her. We start talking. I give her my business card. And at the time, my business card had one of my pieces on the back. And so she's like, oh, man, you do car art? And I was like, yeah. And I'm tripping out right now because I'm like, I didn't know what she did. I just knew that this lady was a very elegant lady. Right. Lady, and she was like, like, my art was clearly lowrider stuff. And she was like, I love this. And I was like, really? She's like, yeah, I, I was in the car game for a long time. I'm like, no way. And she, I was like, she goes, do you build cars? I go, yeah, I build lowriders. And she goes, wow, I used to build Hondas. And she goes, but I haven't <laughs> shown in years. What? Yes. This is the conversation we're having at this big business table, right? I'm, I'm like, and I'm tripping because I'm like, is this really happening right now? <laughs> you know? So I tell her, she goes, well, um, the last time I showed, I, I won a show was in 98. I won in Slamfest. And, and as soon as she said that, I was like, well, wait a minute, Slamfest 98. And I was like. I was like, you won what place? And she was like, first place. And I was like, wait a minute, you beat Rocco? And she's like, yes. And I was like, I was in Harsh Reality. It's the car club. And she's like, yes, I beat Rocco from Harsh Reality. I beat your club. I beat. <laughs> and I'm like. Girl got, power. Yeah, I'm just kidding. I'm <laughs> so I was like, what? Yeah, I couldn't believe this. This I'm is like, crazy. you got to be kidding me. 
So she's like, yeah, let me tell you, next time I do a show, maybe I can have your artwork there. So I'm like, all right, cool, I'm down. Like, you know, let's get, let's get it. Now, I end up getting a friend of mine come by my house. He had just married this girl, and he's like really excited. I hadn't seen him in a long time. He's come back. He's like, I just got married. I'm so excited, blah, blah. So he came. She met my wife. You know, they hung out for a while. Yeah. And so she's looking at the art on the walls, and she says to him, I would love to wear this art. Can you can you make like a bathing suit out of it? I'm coming to your house. Let's just let, let's just go ahead and just let, 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 tell you why. Let, tell you why. I'm I'm a, uh, me and my husband gonna visit. We just want a tour. Okay, we coming to Florida because I gotta see what's going on at this house. I know. Something about the house it's magic. <laughs> but go ahead. I'm so sorry. So, I just wanted to stamp that real quick. We come. We you're welcome. And the food's great. Man. My wife could throw down. So we coming. Know. Okay. All right. So. And, and so, uh, you know, he was like, hey, do you think you could make a bathing suit? And I was like, and, I, you know, and here's the thing. So let me tell you, for all your listeners, you got to know this. It, when, you, when you start your business, you got to become like a yes person. Like, wow. I became a yes man. I was like, yeah, I could do that. And I would just figure it out later. And so wow. I was like, man, what am I going to do? How am I going to figure this out? So I called um, Liliana, the lady from Palm Beach Swim Week. And I was like, hey. Do you happen to know a manufacturer for bathing suits? And she's like, yeah, what are you trying to do? And I said, well, I want to put my, my artwork on bathing suits. Okay. And she's like, wow, that sounds really cool. So what I did, the first thing I did was I researched what material would I be able to use to, to put my artwork on bathing suits without <laughs> it fading. Because I was like, how, I, how do I do this? So I had to learn about the material. I had to learn about sublimation. I don't know. I mean, I had to learn a lot and I was doing tests. I was taking it to different companies like, can you test this, print this, see how it comes out? Take the stuff home, wash it, dry it, wash it, dry it to see what what work was the best quality. Wow. And I went through this whole thing and I made three samples, but they were expensive. And I was like, now I know. So, guys, if you guys don't know, women's bathing suits are ser seriously expensive. <laughs> right. <laughs> they really are. That and solid color, don't, don't, don't. And uh -huh. they're more expensive to make. I mean, it was, wow. it was like, wow. So I made these three, and I designed them and everything, and I was like, I drew them up, and I you know, went to the seamstress. I was like, this is how I want them to look. This is where I want the art. This is what I want to look like. Okay. And, um, and I called Liliana, and I said, hey, I said, I just made some, but they're really expensive. And she's like, I have a manufacturer. She goes, but I want to challenge you. She's like, because... I'm, I've been looking at your art, and I've been thinking, this has got to look amazing on a bathing suit. And so she's like, I'll tell you what. She's like, if you can come up with 20 designs, different designs, and bring me three quality samples, I'll give you a shot in Palm Beach Swim Week. And she's like, and I handpick my designers. And I was like, ooh. <sighs> so I did. And what I did was I went to, like, Pompano Beach, Deerfield Beach, Fort Lauderdale, uh -huh. And I went and I would walk around looking for women wearing bathing suits that I thought were attractive. Okay. And so I would think about what I would add or change to that design. And then I went up and I was like, hey, I'm designing some bathing suits. I like your bathing suit. What don't you like about it? And the reason I would ask that was because I wanted to know what was going to happen. If I can make my bathing suits more comfortable for them, more likable. Less complaints. Okay, so stop. Wait, I, I just I, I want you guys to just imagine <laughs> ladies being on the beach and you just chilling, and a guy's like, "Hey, I just want you to know, like, what don't you like about your bathing suit? What? What are you trying? What are you trying to say? Like, creeper yeah. moment. But this is real yes. life happening. Yeah. Well, what I you're did was building. Like, yeah, I found girls that were walking with a guy, and I would go to the guy. That's even you know, better. Like oh age, my gosh. You know, and I had my notepad and everything and I had sketches and I'm like, this is serious. I'm, I'm really designing bathing suits and I like your bathing suit, but I want to change this and this. What don't you like about it? What would make it more comfortable? This is hustling. This yes. is grinding. Yes. This is like <laughs> customer service at its finest yeah. in your face. It was That's tough. awesome. Because I think for you to do that, especially made for a woman, who else is better to talk to than a woman yeah. wearing a bathing suit? Yep. Ah, brilliant. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> ah, okay, guys, take notes. Take Tr notes. I want to say this because I think you are a living, true example of trusting the process. Yes. Trusting the process every step of the way. And I doubted it. There was moments of doubt. I got to tell okay. you, you have to fight through those. Yes. You know, because it's tough. You know, there's shutdowns, there's letdowns, there's oh my there's tests that fail. There's there's a lot. You have to go through it. There's no way 
There's no easy way. Now, you just had a, a gift in the in the beginning of drawing. Yes. Okay. And never pursued it. And never pursued no. it. Now, here you are. You've you've made paintings. You you I mean you've made collages. You yeah. you're going totally against the grain. You're in the middle of the USA where collage art isn't as popular. Now your art is going on to bodies. Yes, movies body. now movies, bodies. Bodies. Let's get <laughs> Galleries. it. Galleries. Oh my gosh. Okay, so um, she offers you this. You present this, yeah. and what happens? She was shocked. Okay. At my designs. My looks, the, the quality of the bathing suits I had made. And she was like, what would you change? And there was a few things about the stitchings that I didn't like. And okay. she was like, yeah, that's what I would work on. And so I just, you know, made the adjustments. I learned a little bit more about stitching, which stitchings work. I started looking at other bathing suits, going to different places to see what they used. Yes. And that's how I started doing it. And so I did Palm Beach Swim Week. And it was that's where I met Juan. <clears throat> because... <sighs> I invited him because I had, we were there was a, a an event that I went to and I met the lady that was the promoter and she's like hey I got this director coming in that you met at another event she's like you know um, why don't you have him come down you know um, she's like I wanted to do something like special for him and I was like come to my after to my fashion show and to my after party and that's how we became friends. Woo! <laughs> Listen guys, okay, I'm just here for it. Um, and then the squad happens, the movie, everything happens. Let me so. Guys, what, what you're seeing and what you're witnessing is literally the heart of a lion. Because you just did not stop. I was no giving up. There no was, giving up. It's not an option. It's not an option. Oh, man. Um, what was it like for you growing up? Um, well, I grew up in Chicago. Okay. Uh, the first, like, 15 years of my life. Nice. And I got into trouble early. You know, uh, my parents had split up, so I come from a broken home. We okay. lived in the hood. Gangs were what, what I knew. Okay. So I joined the gang. I was getting in trouble. I was really into graffiti. The gang thing was kind of like you had to because you were in a neighborhood. Yeah. You know, they took care of you, so you kind of, you just end up in it. Right. You know? And um, and so, you know, it come to a point where they were shot shooting at me, and my mom was like, nope. Send Gotta me go. to Florida. She shipped me to Florida. Wow. And so I ended up in Florida, in Pompano Beach, Florida, <laughs> which was complete ch culture shock for me. Yes. Because it was nothing like Chicago. It was no, you know... I mean, it, it it was so wild, and I always tell people the story that you know we were we used to pull up to this lake and swing off the truck into the lake. Oh. And so one day, you know, I my cousin's yelling at me, "You got to get out of the water! You got to get out of the water!" I jump out of the water. Yeah. And he says, "You know, there's an alligator." And I, I see the alligator. Oh, okay. And I'm like, "What the heck?" And so me being a city slacker, you know, my response was, "Why isn't that thing in the zoo?" Right, <laughs> right. It's like it's Florida. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's like, "No, you're in its habitat." You know what I mean? Wow. But, my automatically instinct was put it in the zoo. <laughs> <laughs> it's not supposed to be here. Somebody get somebody, please. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I think your story is so um, inspiring. Um, it's beautiful. You have a beautiful story. I think it's it's magical. I'm serious. It's literally magical because it's it all happened in your home. Yes. yes. So, I mean, like, guys, like, I know you're ready to go home now. Like, who, anybody <laughs> visiting this week? Let's see who we can get. What other oh opportunities I can get? Oh, my goodness. So, what is life like for you now? Um, it's interesting because I'm still, you know, a husband. I'm a father. Yes. So, you know, and I have a teenage daughter who, you know, it's funny because now my daughter wears my bathing suit designs. And so, you know. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I need to, you I can't need to say make can't wear that. It's like I know, I know. I'm like, oh, looks great on you, but do you, can, I have ones that are cover more. Yes. You know, get the onesie. Like, yeah, look at you know the onesie. I mean? <laughs> oh my so god, it's, just it's beautiful. <laughs> wow, talk about having a good friend when your friend's father makes bathing suits for a living. It's awesome. Yes, yes, that's awesome. Yes, that's, and that's working now. You know, the, the, all her little friends are like, hey, we want a bathing suit, and I'm like, oh, yes. Man. Yeah. Um, now, um, before we get ready to get up out of here, um, I know that we were talking about cars and, um, um, you are a car lover. Now, um, I heard to the grapevine, you got a special call. Oh yeah. And yeah. what is your car's name? My car's name is Jasmine. Ja Look, he, <laughs> Jasmine. Jasmine. Not Jasmine. 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 <laughs> um, now, talk, let's talk a real briefly about, uh, Jasmine and, and, and who she is. Jasmine's a 1983 Buick Regal. And I got suicide doors, suicide hoods, suicide trunk. 
chrome undercarriage. Let's go. So, but I'm still building her. She's still, you know, got got some ways to go before she hits the show floor in the streets. Okay. okay. I drive my car. I'm gonna tell you, no, I my car is not a trailer queen. She she drives to the shows. I drive her. She goes everywhere. Period. What's that? She ain't getting brought nowhere. No, She's no. getting dripped. I love it. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, because, like, shout out to all the lowriders out there. Yeah, like, yeah. the lowrider families out there. Because I think, you know, that is an art lifestyle. It is. You know, you take something um, with with history yeah. and you oh, make sure. art out of it. And let me tell you, I got yeah. to drive one in the squad. I'm driving a 78 Monte Carlo, the black one. Come on now. And so it was great. <laughs> and we were on set. And let me tell you. What you guys are going to experience in the squad yes. is is really is really unbelievable. Okay. I mean, the movie, the story, the story is the story, is, yeah. is magical. Yes. It's powerful. It's deep. Yes. And then the scenes and shooting it was like this was I've shot a, I've shot quite a few films now, but this was the most intense. We had people blowing up. We had fire people on fire. People falling off buildings, and there was a scene where. We had to drive in like this car chase. Yes. And they were going to have the stunt guy drive. And I'm like, no, I could swing that low rider. <laughs> I got this. <laughs> I got this. And, and the guy that owned the car was like, no, I trust he could drive it because they all know me from the low rider community. So yeah. it was cool because we had like extras and everything that recognized me from the low rider community. And there was people that recognized me from movies. So it was like, it was really a fun It was time. a no brainer. Yeah. And working with Juan and working with the team. Um, there was, I mean, it was wild. Mike Gassaway to work with him, Tyler Gallant, Robert Lasardo was like, so it was, it was really intense. And I got to see some of the parts of the movie was put together. And let me tell you, you guys are in for a treat. Let's get <laughs> it. Um, when does the squad release? Uh, that I can't tell you yet. Well, Juan still, you know, got some, some plans. So we will be sending out the... <laughs> oh, come on now, period. All we'll right. We'll see a second trailer soon, though. Nice, so nice. We'll What's in the making for Mr. Kenny right now? So I have several things I'm working on. I have a movie called Negativity that's out making its rounds in film festivals. I have, I'm have i working with Rack Productions out of South Florida. All right. And we got like a talent show going on that they can win cash prizes, trophies, and studio time. Nice. Um, with possible record deals and things like that. Okay. Distribution deals. Um, and then I have uh, another film that I'm going to be shooting called um, Side Effects. And with Juan, I got three movies contracted with them. The first one's going to be called North Side. Talk, so. talk about booked <laughs> and busy in these streets. <laughs> it has been such a pleasure to sit here and talk with you, yes. Mr. Mag Thank you. Chop Kenny. <laughs> Where can people find you and find your artwork? All right. So if you go on Instagram, look up Mag Chop, M A G C H O P. Um, if you want to find the fashion, it's M A G C H O P and then underscore fashion. And I also have a YouTube. It's under Mag Chop, and you can see my Miami Swim Week show. You can see my Chicago show, my and some of my Palm Beach show. I think my Orlando show is on there. And my next, my plans for my next show will be New York Fashion Week, and oh. I will actually be showing my new designs along with. I introduced in December. I had a show. Uh huh. We introduced my daughter's line. So. My daughter's 15 years old, and she is my new designer. We'll be collabing on our next show. We're planning on New York. Oh, my gosh. Congratulations. <laughs> yes. Talk about excitement, guys. We're going to have to fly her in for a show next. Yeah, we have to definitely. <laughs> we, have, we have to bring her down now. Definitely. Oh, my gosh. Um, well, it's been such a pleasure. Thank you. Uh, before we get ready to get up out of here, guys, really quick, any words – um, of wisdom to the youth. Any any words of the wise to the wise out there? Yeah, I would say, listen, chase your dreams. Don't give up. And every time you're going through something difficult, know that it's sharpening you for something better. Um, you can't have a testimony without the test. <sighs> Period. Period. <laughs> All right, now we're going to play a quick little game, Matt. Chop. You All ready, right, Kenny? Let's do it. All right. Now I am going to um, throw out a couple of lines. And, and you got a little help in the building. You you know, okay. you know. You you do this movie thing, right? <laughs> um, and you just tell me the name of the movie. Ooh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Let me get one. One rib. I'm hungry. <laughs> I sure am hungry. Who said that? Was it Chris Rock? Was it Michael Jordan? Or was it Mike Tyson? It was Chris Rock, and I'm going to get you sucked. Yeah, let's get it. <laughs> let's go. Let's go. Y'all stay tuned. We ain't done yet. Here we go. Okay. 
His mama named him Clay. I'm going to call him Clay. Who said that? Was it Arsenio Hall, Eddie Murphy, or George? Oh, man. I, I, I want to say it was Eddie Murphy in Harlem Nights, but I, I feel like I might be wrong about that. Hold on. Juan? <laughs> His mama called him Clay. I'm going to call him Clay. Was it Eddie Murphy, Arsenio Hall, or George? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'll tell you the name of the movie. Okay. Coming to America. Coming to America. It was Arsenio Hall. <laughs> it was. <laughs> let's go. Let's I was, go. I, picture, I knew it was Eddie Murphy and Arsenio Hall that had that, <laughs> that dialogue. <laughs> Here we go. Ain't nobody coming to see you, Otis. Was that David Ruffin, Michael Jackson, or Michael Jackson? They were talking about they were talking about Otis from um <laughs> Gosh, I remember. I could I could see it, but I can't. Was it David Ruffin? No, it's Michael Jackson. And it was it was Michael Jackson. It was I think it was from the film about the Jackson Five, right? Final answer. <laughs> Ain't nobody coming to see you, Otis. Was it David Ruffin or was it Michael Jackson or Michael Jackson? Let's go with David Ruffin. David Ruffin, let's go. You better David believe Ruffin. it. It was <laughs> definitely David Ruffin. About Otis, uh, Otis Wilson, right? Let's go. Let's <laughs> say. <laughs> The temptation, the temptation that's right. Movie. See, yeah. you, you know this. I mix them up. <laughs> I was it was Leon. Yep, Leon. Yeah. Yep. Look, see, you, see, you guys know. You guys know. Listen, this has been so much fun. I mean, so much fun. Kenny, any words before you get ready to get up out of here? Um, work hard. Have fun. Work hard and play hard. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> and stay tuned. That's right. Squad, squad up. up. Squad up. <laughs> it's been such a pleasure, Kenny. We will definitely see you soon. You guys, stay tuned. It's your girl, Mikhail Rose, and the one and only Mr. Mag Chop Kenny. See you soon. Bye.